and I'm like 12, 13 years old, mm -hmm. throwing rocks at Mexicans. And it wasn't until much later in my life that I said, what was I a part of? What was I a part of? It's like the people who now, you know, hate Muslims, like the people who, uh, who stood, you know, uh, outside the schools in Little Rock and called dirty names, the people that were on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in, in, um, in Alabama when they walked across it and called people names and watched the police dogs by people. We, all of us have been in situations where we did not act the right way, and I didn't. And the only reason I said is because I want people to know that I had to learn. People had to teach me. Wake up, America. The enemy is already here. I see the suffering of the Syrian refugees, for instance. Um, and we live down here by the border, Mexican border, so um, we uh, see a lot of travelers come through, and um, it, it is, it's a great pain uh, to know the suffering of these people. As I told you before, I used to go down to Mexico as a prison chaplain and uh, um, saw the poverty down there in Mexico. and. Um, I was young, in my 30s when I went down there. Um, but um, even then I felt embarrassed to come back, you know. I, I brought food uh, um, and clothing. And one time we gave a whole, almost a whole van of clothing and food to a poor Mexican family. And a wife, uh, they lived in the dirt floors five children in one room, you know. They had curtains. Right. And um, um, she gave, she was so grateful. Uh, she gave the only thing she had of value, which was a lime squeezer, lemon squeezer. And that was her prized possession. And she would not take no for an answer. Wow. She gave it to me. And I still have it to this day. And every time I squeeze a lemon, I pray for that family. That's great. Yeah. And you know uh, the, what we're seeing uh, with the refugees from Syria, from that part of the world, what we see from the people coming across the U.S. border, all of our relatives at some point went through that. You know, my parents came right after the Revolutionary War of the United States. We suffered mm -hmm. like nobody's business. Uh, your own family, when they had to leave, you know, they come across in Alice Island, greeted people of all ethnicities. Mm -hmm. And when people came here, uh, they weren't treated any better than we're treating people right now in Europe and we're treating the people that come from Central America or Mexico here. And, and so people have to look at the long picture of where people have moved from one part of a, of a country to another part of a country or between countries. Because there was a time when Economics were so bad in the South that uh, African Americans, we refer to our brothers and sisters, but blacks in the, when they started going up North, people hated them. Yeah. It was like the invasion. If you look at the Dust Bowl eras, it wasn't a, a person of color against white people. It was white people against the Okies, against those, and some of the Okies came from middle class families, upper class families, they weren't all dirt farmers. And they came and they lost everything. And they even sent the police uh, and troopers out to try to stop them from coming to California. Mm. And so when you look at that, is we never want to welcome people. And some of those same people who came over as Okies in California don't want to welcome the immigrants that are coming in now. You forget what your history was. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Italians, the Jews, the, the Finns, the Poles, everybody who came in in all those periods, don't accept them, and even and even um, Mexican Americans are not welcoming. All of us do not welcome the immigrants, especially when the first wave came from Central America. We didn't welcome them. So if you look at the gang situation in Los Angeles, for example, there was 18th Street, which was the big Chicano gang. So when the Salvadorians came over, 
the, the Mexican gangs took advantage of them. So they said, we're going to organize our own gang to defend ourselves. So they organized what is now known as MS-13 or La Mara Salvatrucha. And that was a defense mechanism. It's not that they said, let's go to the United States and form a gang. They did it because we didn't welcome them. We didn't accept them. And I want to tell you a part of my history, because I like, you know, what you see now, Gabriel, is not who I was. Who you are is not what you were. You know, we, we've been on this journey, this spiritual journey, to heal ourselves and along the way maybe bring some other people and heal them. But I was a farm worker in Colorado. You know, I started at an early age. So at that point, they had the Bracero program, which were people that were brought from Mexico, uh, an arrangement between the two governments to come to the United States and work for farmers. And what it was is growers did not want to pay a decent wage, so you could bring people from Mexico in great numbers approved by the Mexican government, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and pay them a lower wage and they'd be like indentured servants. So what we saw, you know, we're workers, is the Mexicans our own compatriots, but we couldn't connect the knots. They take our jobs, and these Mexicans were slicker. They took the young women, because, you know, we just say, well, let's go dance, and they take them flowers, and they were more colorful. So we saw these workers who would take our jobs, take our women, and you know what we ended up doing is fighting them, physical fights. I remember one night on a Saturday night, the growers brought in the, um, uh, the workers from Mexico to buy their food products and that. And uh, what we did, it because we were angry at them, is we had a physical fight with them. We threw rocks at them, and they were in the back of a flatbed truck, and the only thing they could throw at us, because they were in a parking lot of a store, is the canned food that they just bought to defend themselves. And you know, the cops were like half a block away, watching Latino, Mexicans against Mexicans, destroying themselves. Never intervened, never stopped. If they had turned on the siren, fired a shot, we would have stopped. But you know, and I'm like 12, 13 years old, mm -hmm. throwing rocks at Mexicans. And it wasn't until much later in my life that I said, what was I a part of? What was I a part of? It's like the people who now, you know, hate Muslims, like the people who, uh, who stood, you know, uh, outside the schools in Little Rock and called dirty names, the people that were on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in, in, um, in Alabama when they walked across it and called people names and watched the police dogs bite people. We, all of us have been in situations where we did not act the right way, and I didn't. And the only reason I said is because I want people to know that I had to learn. People had to teach me. I had to become open to understand. And so early on, in, in terms of the Mexican-American community, in 74, I had an epiphany, and I started to work on, on protecting immigrant rights. And I haven't stopped since then. Wait.